guess what? Today we're gonna talk about how we got from an egg to something as cute as this. Howdy, and welcome to the Bar SC Ranch, where you will experience our journey of running a family business, caring for animals, and doing life together. Subscribe now and be inspired here at the Bar SC. So here at the Bar SC, we have two really cool, exciting new eBooks that are gonna be launching. One is gonna be talking about handling eggs, which is when you use some light to illuminate the inside of an egg and view a developing chick. Even if you don't have eggs to candle at home, the ebook it does come complete with a bunch of pictures we took of our eggs and our chicks that are now hatched at different stages of their development. So you can actually follow along with the ebook, learn what's happening inside of the egg, and then view what we are being able to see here on the ranch if you don't want to be raising chicks at home, because I know that's a full-time commitment. <laughs> and then our second ebook is all about hatching eggs. The candling doesn't go into anything about chick care, so the hatching is going to talk about incubation. We have our incubator here. We're going to go through what it takes to get, you know, your egg that has nothing inside of it but what you would normally eat, all the way into cute little chicks like these guys down here and even our one duck. Um, it's chock full of all kinds of information, whether or not you're interested in raising your own chicks and ducks. Um, really family friendly, so if you or your kids are interested in learning a little bit more, it's chock full of information. So we're going to link below in the description um, to where you can find those ebooks on our website. Um, there's all kinds of other cool ebooks there as well. So search around while you're there, find something you like, and just know that with every passing day, we're adding even more fun, exciting educational opportunity there. So stick around and check back often. So this is our candler. You can buy them online or from your feed store. Um, you look up an egg candler. You can also make your own just out of a flashlight. And then by cupping your hand over the top, you can get the same effect. Um, but this candle Pinterest, there's a bunch of cool designs on there actually. Or you can find <laughs> something <laughs> awesome. Yeah. But this a, a candler light comes out of the top and it's for it's a little circle right here where the egg sits in perfectly. You still don't want to be walking around trying to do like an egg and spoon sort of thing. These eggs are very delicate. We don't want to be dropping eggs, especially as they get into the later stages of development and we're raising chicks. We're being very careful. So we like to keep our hand up there holding the egg and the candler at the same time. But when the light is shown through the bottom, you shine the light through the air sac of the egg, which is where the chick would, where the chick uses um, air to breathe down there. That's how the air is inside of the egg for the chick. And then we look, this egg is not developing. It's a non-developing egg. So you can see a whole lot in our little candled egg right here. But as it starts to develop further, and we have a chicken here, you'll be able to see less and less because the chick will fill up more of the inside of the egg. But with this one, you can see really cool just how much you see nothing inside the egg. And with that light below, you really get a very cool view of the inside of the egg and eventually a developing chick or duck, hopefully. So inside of this egg, you can see some veins if you look in the clearer parts of the egg. And this is how the blood supply is getting to the developing duck. This is a duck egg from one of our ah. ducks here on the ranch. You can also see the body of the duck that's forming. And if you look really closely, you'll notice it actually moves every once in a while. It's very cool to see. She can show you the back side of the egg as well. If she rotates it around a little bit here, there we go. And you can see that's actually the forming duck. And so in 12 more days, this duck is going to hatch. And at that point, most of the egg is gonna be black, like that upper portion that you see right now, because the, the duck's body will grow to fit the size. You can see a lot of movement right there. Let's rotate it a little bit, there we go the duck will actually grow to fill the size of the entire egg. So with it, when you go to candle it, you won't be able to see much else. It'll just look like a black egg. And that's actually a really good sign. It means that something's growing in there. So this duck looks like he's doing really, really well. And in 12 days, we'll have our own little duckling. So this is one of our non-fertilized eggs. And if you were to candle an egg that you could find at the supermarket, and you just wanted to check out the ones that you have at home, you can make a little makeshift makeshift egg candler like this one with just a flashlight in your hand. Kylie, you wanna show them cupping your hand around yeah. the top like you would? Okay. So if you just cup your hand around the top of a flashlight like this and stick an egg that you buy from the store on top, you can stare inside it the same way. No chick is gonna be growing no matter what temperature you keep that egg at, <laughs> it's not fertilized. But this one is a great example of what you can see inside, which is just that yolk that's in there. It's gonna be free moving, Nothing's going to develop out of it. No veins will ever show you up. You can see it right in here. And you can see that darker area up top that Kylie's pointing to. 
And then if we actually flip the egg over, you'll see it, it'll move to the top. So you can see this is, it's right here now. Whereas the chick will, the chick will just be stuck to one side of the egg and it won't move around like that. So here you can see an egg that's actually going to hatch really soon. Um, if I tilt it down, you can see the air pocket there. Um, and the rest of it is all black. We can't see much at all. And so that means the chick is filling up almost the whole egg. So it should be hatching soon. So as you can see in this egg right here, as the chick is forming, it uses the yolk for all of its nutrients. So that's the yellow part. When you crack it open, it's you can dark see the- dark part right here. Yep. And then they'll use the air sac that's down at the bottom and that's where they get their whole the air through their whole incubation period. And by the time it's their hatching day, that whole air sac will be empty and then they have to hatch to be able to get air from the outside. So as the chick or duck is forming within the egg and these veins start to form, that's how the, the duck or chick is going to be receiving all kinds of nutrients, um, any vitamins, minerals, anything that he needs from the yolk of the egg. And as the chick or duck grows bigger to form the, or to fill the entire inside of the egg and those nutrients have all been used up. He'll actually form the entirety of the egg before then coming out. But while they're in the egg, they're not attached to the wall of the egg and it's actually very bad for them to be attached to the wall of the egg, which is why incubators like ours down here have an automatic turning system. So two to three times a day, these eggs will be rotated so that no, no duck or chick ends up attached to the side of their egg because if they sit on one side for too long, and kind of like how your foot might fall asleep, if you go and you know cut off blood flow to that side of your foot, the chick or duck will actually form attached to the side of the egg to the point where when they are ready to hatch, half of their body won't have formed over because they're attached to the egg on that side. So it's very important for them to be turned often so that no one side of your chick is stuck to the edge of the shell because they're not meant to be. <laughs> yeah, and you might actually be able to see, I'm seeing a vein here that's actually, it's disappearing and coming back. It's pulling off the the side of the egg and you can s see that sometimes it'll move. I don't know if it'll do it. Yeah, because the chick is actually inside the membrane and attached to the membrane because that's where all those veins that you're seeing are, but that membrane is not attached to the outside of the yeah. egg. Just like when you boil an egg and then you go to peel the shell off the outside, sometimes you can find a little membrane that you can peel off as well underneath that shell. And that's the membrane that your little chick right there is growing inside of and isn't attached to and is protected by and is able to grow those veins throughout in order to feed itself and develop. All right, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about the heat that we, the temperature, the heat range that we keep our eggs at while they're in the incubator. And our incubator has a really nice little dial where we can actually set the temperature. Ours is set for right at 100 degrees or 99.5. Um, and then sometimes we have to use a towel and we'll cover it at night when it gets really chilly um, just to make sure that it stays up at that uh, warm up temperature because sometimes it'll drop when it gets really cold outside and that's not so good. Your eggs can stay at a temperature range of about 97.5 to 102, but we found that the best hatch rate is right around 100 degrees. Um, we also have it set at a specific humidity. So by the time a chick is ready to hatch, they've developed what's called an egg tooth, either on their bill if it's a duck or on their beak for a chick. And that's just a little tiny sharp hard point at the end of their beak or bill that they're then going to use to break a hole in the side of their egg and eventually come out and hatch. Uh, from the time that a chick starts to attempt to hatch, we've seen them come out just like 10 minutes later. We find them in the incubator with a little tiny, what they call it a pip. So a pip is the first little hole that a chick or duck makes in the side of their egg. It's very cool to come in here and look in the incubator and go, oh my gosh, it's hatching! And then we never know. You could sit here for five minutes and have like 10 chicks hatch, or it could be two days later and finally those things are coming out of the egg it's important and we, we try really, really hard here at the I'm ranch. I'm the worst at this. I <laughs> want to help them. <laughs> to not help Don't our chicks help or them. ducks get out of their egg. It's super easy to be, you know, very, and it, it comes from a place of love and a place from caring to want to help them get out of their egg. But unfortunately, if they're struggling to get out of their egg, 
there's a problem going on that's then going to cause them either to have very low quality of life or to not survive in the long run. So it's really in their best interest to allow them to figure it out and to allow them to fight their battle out of their egg and let, let it be what may be. <laughs> because if you do help them out, it's very, very unlikely that they're going to survive after that. So this little guy took about six no, he started hatching last night. Yeah, he started hatching last but night. But once he got a wing and we can see um, part of his head and part of a wing, it still took another five hours mm -hmm. for him to get out of the egg. And I wanted to come in and pull that shell open <laughs> so badly, or at least, you know, help it along a little bit. Right. But I'm really glad I did not because <laughs> it's, you know you've got a really healthy duck or chick once they pop out of that egg and you didn't have to help them. Yeah, if you start trying to pull layers of anything Sometimes off of that's them, really bad. especially yeah. you've pulled them out of the humid environment inside of that incubator, as soon as you do that, it starts to dry and contract around them. And now you're trying to pull a membrane off of them that's really stuck. You're pulling, you know, they're down out, they're down to that fluff that they have. The chick is just cold, wet, and unhappy, and you're making it actually a lot harder in the long run. So we, we try our best. <laughs> Um, we leave our eggs alone as they hatch, and yeah. we do everything we can to set them so, set them up for success with our care practices and what eggs we choose to hatch. But we know that we've done the best by them, and we have to just live with each little chick's individual journey. So once your chicks have hatched, it's also really important to keep your temperature at a really um, appropriate range. So in our little brooder, we just use a box with a heat lamp and a, a specific heat bulb. You can buy those from any of your feed stores or um, hardware stores. They're really easy to find or online. What we want to do is keep the chicks right about, um, especially right after they hatch, at pretty close to 100 degrees. 98 is fine, 99. What I do or what we do is we watch the chicks. If they're all huddled up underneath that heat lamp, they're too cold. And what we'll do is we'll drop this heat lamp a little bit closer. Um, if you're finding that your chicks are out and they're pushed up against the, the side of your brooder far away from the lamp, you probably got it too hot. And when that happens, then we just make sure we've raised it up higher. So the, um, the whole point of me telling you this too is that it's really important when you're hatching your chicks and you've got them just freshly hatched to check on them often. We're in here literally every couple hours just making sure that they're temperature that they're moving around that they're all seeming healthy and happy and um, so it's really important to be available and able to be with them when they hatch. We hope that this video today has been incredibly educational for you and that you've learned a little bit about both candling, chick development, and how we care for our chicks here on the ranch. Check out those ebooks that are in the description below and in the comments below in order to learn a little bit more about raising chicks, candling chicks, having backyard chickens, all kinds of fun things. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or check out those eBooks. Hopefully we've answered them already, um, but we really hope that you enjoy them. Please like and subscribe. And we love sharing our knowledge with you, so keep your eye out for some more fun and entertaining videos. We'll see ya. Bye.